Here I am again. This is Uncle Hank Ferguson. I'm from the Big Island. I'm here in Honolulu right now. And so we just completed two of them uh, that you can look for. Um, one was on the uh, Public Land Development Corporation, which is now the financial arm of the DLNR, which, if you've been noticing, has caused outrage throughout the state. Um, and uh, yeah, I, so I also did... I just did another one on the Rolls Commission and what the Rolls Commission intends to do for you or not do for you or how they they plan to snow you into this because you just don't know. And so I, I uh, provided a lot of information that you can go look up yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Um, and uh, you can find out that, you know, a lot of us guys are working really hard and we really want to share this information with you. Anyway, so. So the subject right at hand right now that I'm going to talk about is uh, military buildup in the Pacific Islands. Um, now, I, I can't expect that you would know about this. Uh, you'd have to be like damn near smelling the butt of the army in order to understand what the hell he thinks he's doing. And of course the army would only be one of the several branches of the military. But anyway, um, I, I uh, caught this uh, new move that they're doing. It's called the uh, Southern California Pacific uh, uh, Southern California Pacific Buildup uh, or Military Strategic Planning. Okay, and it talks about what the military has intentions of doing here in Hawaii. Now, this is very very scary because. Uh, you know, we're, we're starting to notice these things. We're, we're actually hearing little arguments pop up here and there, like, for instance, the Ospreys, which is the uh, vertical takeoff uh, uh, planes that they're going to they're gonna be putting in, in uh, Kane, Air, Air Corps, Kane Oe Marine Corps Air Station. Um, I believe they're, they are going to station either five or seven of those at that location. Now, that's only one of the problems that's coming in, because along with them come the Apache helicopters, the buildup of the Blackhawks, and the slow but sure move of the 25th Infantry that is person right now stationed in Schofield, um, up to the Big Island of Hawaii into the Puakaloa area. Now, for you who don't know where that is, Puakaloa is the saddle road. It's that piece of desert-like land. It's an alpine desert uh, in between Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. Now, uh, I myself, I drive that area and I look at it and I'm, I am horrified every day when I see it because it comes worse and worse and worse every day. Which once, once used to be a beautiful drive across the mountain through a nice uh, tropical rainforest area. Uh, now it's just been, uh, uh, I'm not sure how they're doing it or how they're poisoning it, but uh, all the trees are all dead there, all the shrubs are dead. They're killing animals like crazy up there um, to put in this military installation now. Understand that Pualkaloa military training area has been around since before World War II. Um, but it's always been this just little encampment. It is also the site where they conduct the RIMPAC exercises here in Hawaii. And, and, and for those who don't know about the RIMPAC, this is a, a collaborative uh, uh, military exercise conducted in Hawaii once a year uh, with I believe up to seven or eight countries now they all come over here and they take the liberty to blow up our island and invade us from everything from Bellows Beach on over okay and they they bomb things they, they just do all kinds of bad things but the reason I'm, I'm bringing in this this particular Southern California Pacific one is because when I finally caught wind of this particular project, it was in the, the, the one week before the final, the final statements, the final comments had to be made regarding the draft EIS, or the draft environmental statement. Now, of course, in their draft, they say there's no potential impacts and it will harm nobody. But I am very, very concerned about what they're saying there because the area in which they describe, by the way, it's a 3,000-page document. If you want to go on the Internet and look at it, you can go find it on the internet under United States Army. They'll talk about the military buildup in Hawaii 
and all 3,000 pages of their justification for why they're going to do what they're going to do. But what concerned me very, very heavily is that a, a lot of these exercises, these bombing exercises, uh, sonar testing types of things, um, are going to take place in the Northern Hawaiian Islands in what is known as the Papahanaumoku Marine Sanctuary. Now this brings a lot of questions to my mind. How is it that you can have a marine sanctuary that forbids all of us who live there, who go there routinely, are now forbidden to go there, but the military is allowed to go in there and blow it up and experiment with things. And so that brings large, large concern to me because, uh, uh, you know, the military ha is this magic machine of justification. It can tell you that it's going to use poison, but because of the amount of poison they're going to use, it's not going to hurt you. But it's poisonous nonetheless. And so we're supposed to take the word that it's not going to be of any harm to us. Well, I'm very concerned about this because a lot of the fish stocks that go around the Hawaiian Islands birth. They spawn up in the northern Hawaiian Islands. And that's what comes and ends up swimming into our waters that we live on. And so, um, I don't know if you remember maybe 10 years back when they first started the first sonar projects off of Kona, the uh, Navy sonar things. And we were up in the opposition, some of us were in op opposition at that time. And one of the biggest reasons is because of some of the, the very negative effects it had on the humpback whale, which is a uh, nationally endangered species, and also very closely related to the Hawaiian through genealogy and mythology. But it also would disturb things like the, uh, the, the naya, the porpoises. And what we have seen were wherever the sonar practice has been tested, and it's been tested all over the Pacific, all over the, the Atlantic, a lot around the Canary Islands and places like that, uh, in Indonesia, and every place they've had that. They've had massive beachings of whales. They've had, un, they've had unexplainable uh, beachings deaths of whales, um, uh, I mean, so, so dramatic kind. I mean, the kind where the, the whale's brain blows up within its own head, you know? And now I want you to consider how big that whale is and consider how big you are, and then you might be in the same water that they're testing. Or that your favorite fish that you like to eat is going to be in that same water where they're testing. And so, uh, not only is the question is, how are they able to do this into in the uh, National Marine Sanctuary. But a, a larger question arises in the fact that the way this is being described, even in the textbooks, it really gives the appearance of American imperialism, military imperialism. And by that I mean they are trying to now stretch the California border to claim Hawaii as because it's supposed to be the 50th state as part of their territorial lands, like we were somehow connected and we weren't 2,500 miles from them. Um, now, they have been, they've been careful in saying that there are international channels, but it's, it's a very hard one to bite, um, especially if you understand that there's laws, uh, international laws, like the laws of the territorial seas that come into play here. And uh, the reason why the laws of the territorial seas are very important to myself um, as we continue to fight for the restoration of our nation. The laws of the territorial seas uh, designate or delineate um, what your borders are. And when you speak of Hawaii as an archipelagic state or being of an archipelago, the entire archipelago is part of the Hawaiian kingdom. That includes all of Papahanaumoku. So yes, I have a personal interest in that. That is greater than the common person. But yeah, I, I also related to some very deep things in our own religion and our in our past. For instance, our own Kumulipo, or our chant of life. It starts off with the coral polyps. Now, has anybody done any studies, or has any studies ever been done on what would happen with all these sonar testings or these? these chemical bombs and, and uh, percussion bombs or whatever types of bombs they plan to do up there. Has there even been studies on that? Because that is where life starts on Earth. 
not even just in Hawaiian stuff, in, on Earth, it started with the coral polyps. And so I'm very concerned about the, uh, the present effect and the long-term effects of, of uh, having the military do this kind of stuff beyond the sight of the common people. Because, because it's a marine sanctuary, you're not even allowed to go there. So you couldn't go up there and say, hey, these guys are blowing up this place and this place. You wouldn't even be able to know because you're not part of the privy team that's allowed to go there. Um, and so, again, there is a very, very, uh, it, it, it's really hard to deal with because we're not only dealing with uh, a state that is out of control and certainly in bed with the federal government and certainly has no intentions of protecting the interests not only of the Native Hawaiians or of the people of the state. Yeah, they're just going to and grabbing what they can do because the way they look at it, we're just a, you know, we're like, we're like, we're like a test tube. And if the experiment fails, well, too bad. We can always go back to our place. And for myself, I don't feel like I'm a test animal. And I don't think I should be preserved. In fact, I, I am flourishing. And I ask them constantly, please don't pickle me. I'm not a mango. Okay, so. Um, it's very disturbing to me what is going on with the United States' foreign policy on the Pacific buildup, because it is not only happening here, it is happening all over Okinawa, Japan, Guam, Philippines, they're all being hit with the same thing. The United States is putting up bases in Indonesia, um, and they're running into the same type of problems, where the military comes in with lots of money and a lot of might, and they go and rush out everybody and force them into these agreements that allow them to have their bases there at our expense. Um, whereas a lot of people would say, you know, yes, you may be right, but there's nothing you can do about it, or who would you rather have here, would you rather have the United States or somebody else? Uh, quite frankly, I don't want to have any military anywhere here. I think this should be a military-free zone for all of the Pacific. Quite frankly, I think we'd have a whole lot less trouble here. And it's because of the, of the military buildups that cause international terrorist type thinking to be focused in our direction. Um, I have a very good friend that I met just a couple years ago who's a retired lieutenant, lieutenant colonel for the army and is a master aviator. So he's really quite accomplished. Um, being a master aviator means that he's able to fly anything. Well. Very interesting, in our, in our conversations together, he described what it was like to live in Fort Kamehameha at the mouth of, of uh, Pearl Harbor, which is, you know, just, uh, this is just a trace of a village there now. But that's where his home was during World War II, when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. He was in Pearl Harbor when it was bombed. And he does remember quite, quite clearly the circumstances of the billet in the Pacific that caused the Japanese to attack Pearl Harbor as opposed to attacking California. And so this is the same kind of condition that's, a, that's coming apparent today. All this weaponry that's coming over here is, is, is while well, people would like to say it's to protect me, and I ask them from what? The thing I need protection from is the United States military. Um, so I, 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 I'm bringing this out to you because you need to know that there's many layers of this. You also need to know that the United States government, by law now, is officially at war with everybody. Officially. That means that the United States will maintain a constant battle mode forever. No longer is there going to be a war here and there and that we might not need to draft people. No, we're just going to do this war machine and we're going to do an empire thing and just go out there and, and just basically bully everybody around. And if they don't like it, just kill them. Um, Anyway, that's my report on the military. Uh, that I, I, I'm just bringing it to your attention in case it hasn't come to your attention yet. And I hope that you will look into it and don't just, just take my word for it. There's many websites out there that you can go look on. Um, but these things are allowed to happen if you don't know. Okay? So again, I encourage you to take a look uh, not only at, at this video and uh, analyze what we're saying here about the military, 
but also to look at at uh, the other videos, especially on Pona's size. Pona's got an extraordinary, elaborate group of videos that show you all kinds of things that are happening on these islands that doesn't meet the eye. Um, um, anyway, for today, that's my report. If you need to contact me, my name is Hanalei Ferguson. I can be reached at 938-9994. I'm on the Big Island of Hawaii, and um, my email address is hankhawaiian at yahoo.com. So, anytime you guys need me, man, call. Help me get over there, and we'll have these stories. And I got tons of stuff to talk about. Oh